For you people out there that love to protect their shoulders, I got something for you. Shoulder armor is like condoms. You don't need them until it's too late. No? Remember that you can get all the patterns and artwork for my projects on my website. A link in the description down below. And I'll also put a link right here for you guys. You can also get the same patterns and artwork on the month they were released on my Patreon. So have a look at that. This video is once again sponsored by... Lonsdale Leather. Make sure you check the link in the description down below to their website where you can pick up all sorts of tools, supplies, and of course, leather. A new thing for all you early birds is coupon codes. I'm sticking coupon codes into my videos that will last for the first 24 hours after the video's release. This one is Shoulders 10 and obviously gives you 10% off of this shoulder pattern. And actually, I think I'll do it on my other shoulder pattern too. So both shoulder patterns will get a 10% off on the Shoulders 10 coupon code. So go check that out. And hey, if you got here late, turn the notifications on and make sure you don't get here late next time. Now, if you guys are hand stitching these together, there's a specific way you should do it to get all your holes perfectly lined up and that's taping your pattern to the leather and punching through everything. I'm gonna put a link right here to another video of mine where I do this, you can check that out. But obviously I'm using a sewing machine because, well, because I have one. If you got here late and you can't use the coupon code, there is also a armor bundle pattern pack that's 15% discount that has this pattern as well as a few of my other favorite armor patterns in it. So you could pick that up if you want. Now because we are wax hardening these shoulders, well, I'm wax hardening these shoulders. If you're making them for costumes, you could probably water form them, water harden them, do something like that instead of waxing, but I'm wax hardening them for rattan combat. It's got to be vegetan because vegetan's going to soak up that wax and it'll make it rigid when it cools. Is that a period thing? No. Do I care? Also no. For the thinner quotation, I air quotes right there, the thinking that you guys could see that 10 ounce leather I used the number four Odin Beveler, and for the heavier 12 to 14 ounce, I used the number five Odin Beveler, and this 1 8 drive punch for all the holes for my rivets. I do tons of videos on leather carving, but I'm going to go over it really fast for you here. First of all, you need to use vegetable tanned leather. Nothing else can be used. Don't ask me. I always get asked. Just use vegetable tanned leather. This is a laser printed serpent that is part of this pattern pack you could just trace it if you wanted to onto this tracing film but i printed it onto the tracing film because it's easier after you use your stylus to imprint all the lines you are going to take a swivel knife i have a ceramic blade i strop my ceramic blade which people freak out about because it cleans it and just gives it a little extra smoothness on my cuts supposedly you don't have to do that at all according to a bunch of people you can make that decision for yourself If you're working on a large project, you're more than likely going to need to re-wet your leather every once in a while. Make sure you do not go straight into carving or straight into stamping after wetting it. Let it dry for a bit, cool to the touch, but not soggy. There's a bunch of different kinds of bevelers. I like this small smooth one. Make sure your hammer strokes are consistent to cut down on strange anomalies in your project. So. You can see all these are pretty smooth, but when we get to one right here, I think is it? It kind of shows, yeah, there, right across there, you can see those little lines. That's just a little inconsistency in my hammer strokes at that point. And you can go back with your beveler and smooth it over like I have a few times. A lot of time I will try and paint with dyes so I can get all the background dark and bring out the upper pieces. This time I decided to just dye the whole piece because I'm waxing it and I'm gonna paint it because that'll make everything pop a lot better. Now, I love to antique stain leather carving. It looks amazing when done right, but if you are wax hardening your piece, so if you guys are doing this for costume, you can still do your antique stain. 
But if you're wax hardening your piece, antique staining revolves around putting a resist on your project and then rubbing the stain in and wiping it away and the stain stays in all the cracks. If you put a resist on your project and antique it and put it in wax, that wax will fight its way through that resist finding any spot you missed or any cut line more specifically. Your resist is not going to get into all those cut lines and it'll just soak in and muddy your entire project. It won't even be evenly done. It'll just be a mess. So paint it if you're waxing it. Use those Angelus paint markers that I got at Lonsdale Leather there. They're really awesome. Uh, it's a lot easier and you won't have a mess on your hands from trying to antique stain something and then wax it. Also make sure you paint it first. Because if you wax it, there might be wax residue on top and it's going to not adhere very well. So just paint it first and throw it in the wax. You can hand or machine burnish. I like my machine burnisher, but I thought I would show you the hand burnisher really briefly. And then do this because it's faster. I didn't get out of hand stitching completely. I've got to hand stitch these two sides together after I machine stitch the tops on. When you carve something, it is gonna warp the leather slightly. So I've stuck these rivets in in order to hold the hole placement really well while I go around the whole piece and take them out obviously when they're going to interfere with my sewing and that'll shift those holes back into the right spot because when you're stamping that leather it's pushing it out just a little bit and your holes might be just a little bit off so it's a good tip for you just to make sure you have your holes in the exact spot. There is nothing fancy going on here. I'm using one piece of thread, two needles. They're gonna go back and forth repeatedly. I tie a knot at the top after I've really cinched it down. But other than that, I just run it all the way down to the end and tie another knot. This is just a high melting point paraffin wax and when I say that you're not looking for some magic wax. The degrees of which the paraffin wax is higher is very little. I just ask for it when I'm at a candle making shop which is the best place to find wax. Imagine that. So 250 degrees Fahrenheit, 121 Celsius I guess. Never leave half of your project in wax and half of your project out of wax without making sure you dump wax on the out of wax half. It was super detailed. So what's going to happen is if you leave half of your project out and half of it in, it's going to really cook a line around where that other half is outside. So make sure that you are flipping your project if it's out of the wax or dumping wax on it like I was there just to make sure it's got an even temperature and everything comes out really spot on. We're doing five six ounce straps. We got a few straps to make. We've got to make three straps to connect all of the lames of the shoulder together. And then we need two more straps, one for the buckle, one for the strap end.
these dome head brass peening rivets are my go-to rivets because they look cool. So if you don't care about how they look, use something a lot easier, maybe a flat headed copper rivet or just some rapid leather rivets if this is a costume piece. But if you do want these dome head brass rivets, I get them at rivetsonline.com, which is not a plug at all. Uh, that's just where I get them and look for their, this, these specifically are 1 8 inch dome head brass peening rivets. Another, on another note, I have decided to start putting my past builds up for sale on my website. They're great in the background of my videos, but I am starting to get a little overwhelmed with the number of them here. And because I don't do a lot of custom work for people outside of the film industry, I thought this would be an opportunity for some people that really, really, really want something of mine to pick it up. So have a look at that. Should be going up pretty soon. And now I just put the shoulder on my arm so I can check where I want the holes on my strap. And then I punch those holes. And then I'm just gonna mark some holes to mount my shoulder to my armor of choice. Well, there you go, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit that like button if you did. Subscribe for future videos and hit that notification button so you don't miss any of my content, and until next time, keep on being creative in whatever it is you do.